Good morning, everybody. Thank you very, very much for coming. Um, it's a great honor and pleasure for us to host the first Sidney J. Blatt Symposium on Depression. Um, I just heard lots of comments on the fact that I'm wearing a tie. In my, in my defense, I have to say two things. First, I am able to wear a tie. I've done that for many, many years, too many years. And secondly, um, Sid Blatt would kill me if I didn't wear a tie. So uh, that's my defense. What we're going to do right now is we have several dignitaries uh, who are going to greet us and open this seminar. Uh, because President Rivka Karmi has to attend other commitments soon, she's going to speak first. And then uh, the dean of the faculty, uh, the director of the uh, prepared cares uh, stress center and the department's chair, and then we will commence. Again, thank you very much, and I would like to introduce President Rivka Karmi. Just by way of embarrassing uh, Professor Karmi a little bit, I, I would like to say that she has been steadfastly uh, supporting every um, attempt related to promoting mental health and stress research uh, in this university, and I thank her for that. So the question is, you know, what lies behind that? בוקר טוב לכולם, אלה שבאו מרחוק, מקרוב, יש כאן המון סטודנטים וזה מאוד מאוד משמח אותי. אנשי הפקולטה, המחלקה, דיקן הפקולטה, פרופסור דיוויד ניומן נמצא כאן, והאורח הכבוד שלנו, פרופסור תומאס ג'וינר, Welcome, we are very pleased to have you here, this is your first time, the Ben Gurion University, I'm sure this is going to be the last one. Uh, well, I'll tell you, Goran, I was a little depressed this morning, but seeing you in a suit made me so happy. <laughs> so do it again. <clears throat> First of all, I uh, would vi like very much to commend uh, Goran, you, and uh, of course, Mr. David Blatt for uh, choosing this way to commemorate uh, uh, a great scientist in your field. I think uh, having um, scientific conferences is a very elegant and, of course, very educational way uh, to honor a memory of uh, a great scholar. So uh, you can send David uh, my appreciation for that as well. Um, I was thinking about uh, the opening line of Tolstoy in, uh, in Anna Karenina, saying uh, all happy families are alike. Each uh, unhappy family is unhappy in its uh, own way. And I thought uh, you can easily infer from from there, from families to also individuals and uh, community. Uh, but nevertheless, all of us are human beings, so there are more similarities to different communities than, I think, uh, differences. And unfortunately, we became a very knowledgeable community about uh, stress and depression. And Golan is obviously one of the major leaders of, uh, of uh, research in, uh, in that field. Uh, and at the, at the end of the day, it's really about coming together and uh, exchanging ideas and knowledge uh, and notions and insights about uh, how people are reacting to various uh, situations of stress. Uh, what we are experiencing during the past uh, couple of years here is a very specific kind of stress uh, and it is a continuous one and I don't know how much of uh, of what is characteristic about Israelis is uh, the reaction to stress or just something in the genes. Uh, but obviously, uh, we have to cope with that. And um, I'm very pleased that in our university, we have turned our unfortunate experience into some uh, actions. And <clears throat> what I'm very pleased specifically is the fact that uh, we have now combined two uh, leading centers, research centers in the university together. Uh, one is the prepared center uh, for emergency response research, research headed by uh, Limo Aronson, who's going to, uh, to address uh, you uh, shortly, and the CARE center uh, just recently created by um, Golan Shahar, 
and uh, uh, this is the Center for the Advance of Research on Stress-Related Disorders. And um, I think uh, coming together of those uh, two centers and creating one really major, leading, robust center in that regard, I think will lead us, Bengal University, uh, is uh, one of the uh, 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 leading institutions uh, researching stress crises and how we prepare them, not only physically, but also in terms of resilience of uh, the community. So I wish you a very uh, interesting and educating uh, conference workshop. Uh, and to those who are coming from out of uh, Be'er Sheva, can you raise your hands? I would like to see how many are. Wow, wonderful. So uh, welcome to Ben Gurion University. Welcome to Be'er Sheva. And, uh, when you have a chance, just go around. The weather is, what, is wonderful. Just go around and uh, take a look of how beautiful is uh, the campus of Bengal University. Thank you. I'd like to invite the Dean of the Faculty of the Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor David Newman, to address us. Uh, thank you, Golam. Boketov Lekulam. Good morning, everybody. Um, the best thing about uh, really being the second or the third person to greet is really all I need to say is Rivka Ditto, and then step down, all the same things, and, uh, but I'll try and say something additional at least. Um, the fact that when you ask people now to raise their hands who have come from outside Beresheva, I'm always aware that the significance or the importance of the success of a conference can be gauged by the number of people from outside Beresheva who are here at nine o'clock in the morning on the day of a conference. Um, particularly Israelis, more than foreign guests, because in Israel we have this conception that Be'er Sheva is this distant periphery, you know, way out where, you know, if you pass Kastina, well, you don't pass it anymore because we have Kvishesh, uh, that, you know, you've come to the end of the world. Whereas people who come from Chutz Aretz aren't aware of this. They see this little distance. They come the night before, they come in the morning. It's no big deal to them. So to see Ulam Zonenfeld, and I'm always, I always tell people who organize conferences in Zonenfeld, are you sure you want Zonenfeld? Maybe you want a smaller hall, because it's always better to have a hall of 150 places with a few people standing than a hall of 400 with many empty seats. But we're already two-thirds full, and it's only 9.30 in the morning, which means another hour or two this place will be full. So that says something very much about the importance of the conference and the importance of the people who are organizing it. Um, you know, when we come to Greek conferences, we always think, what's the little comment we're going to make? What's the little joke we're going to make? And then, of course, someone like me comes and says, depression, suicide. And then you think, well, I'll make a comment, but probably anyone who is in that field has probably heard the same sort of jokes at the opening of every conference um, of, of this type. The only thing I can say is that as a person who, as a non-academic hobby, writes a weekly column in the journalism in Jerusalem Post, I think out of about 400 columns I've written in the Jerusalem Post, I wrote the most depressing column I've ever written yesterday. Um, it was sort of a New Year's reflection on what's happening in this region, and there's nothing particularly positive to think about at the moment. So maybe somehow in my uh, tat I tied in with today's conference. Um, but having said that, it goes without saying that uh, Golan is one of the leading researchers, not just uh, in Israel, but in the world, in this area, um, dealing with depression, with suicide, dealing with trauma, and of course, uh, not just individual trauma, but collective trauma. And of course, here in Israel, we have to deal not just with the, the regular things that we go through as individuals and families and have all sorts of issues relating to our personal relationship, to our work relationships, but of course, we have collective traumas, and we're going through it every day at the moment with a sort of a third intifada going on. We're not always sure that when we step out on the streets, we're necessarily going to walk back safely into our houses, and uh, we can, in, can be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Unfortunately, it happens to someone somewhere, as it did on Friday in the middle of Tel Aviv. 
And of course, there are other aspects of trauma, and uh, which I assume there's a huge connection between trauma and depression. I'm just assuming it is as a, as a lay individual. It seems to me quite logical and obvious. And therefore, the need for really good research in this country and just the research into why it occurs and how you deal with it is important. And of course, as Dean of the Faculty, I can say that we're very privileged here to have one of the leading, if not the leading department of psychology, one of the leading, I'm sure there are people from other departments here, so I don't want the wrong thing to go back to other universities, but one of the leading psychology departments here, which um, not just in Israel, which has an international status, um, which has some of the top researchers, and Golan is one of the leading people in this field. So I want to thank Golan for organizing this conference, for all the research he does here. I want to thank our honored guest for coming to give a keynote today. And I hope that everybody, like they're here at 9 o'clock in the morning, is still going to be here at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, because I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting and successful conference. I would like to uh, introduce Professor Limor Aronson who's the chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine, um, a reputed scholar and researcher in the field of community medicine. And as Rivka has noted, um, Limor has been directing the uh, Prepared Center, Center for Preparedness and Emergency, which uh, is now the Prepared Care Center because uh, we have merged together. It's, it makes a perfect sense. I'm very happy uh, to, serve as, to serve as Limor's co-director. And thank you, uh, Limor, for addressing us. Thank you very much, uh, Golan, and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, President uh, Carmi, professors, distinguished guests, dear friends, uh, good morning. It's a great honor and a great pleasure to see you here this uh, morning. I was invited to greet as the chair of the Prepared Center uh, of BGU. Prepared Center for Emergency Response Research was established in 2009 at BGU to facilitate dialogue, multidisciplinary collaboration, international collaboration, and engage scholars, practitioners, and other key stakeholders from a variety of countries and disciplines, all dealing with disaster and emergency situations. As the first chairperson, I thought that we should develop an identity as, uh, as a research center, work on the relationships with other uh, groups around us, and I thought that if we maintain a balance and satisfaction with both, we'll be fine. Little did I know that six years later, I will be standing here opening a day in the honor of the person who identified these two pathways of identity and relationships uh, in therapy. Uh, disaster management is often about the physical, broken infrastructure, injured people, and so on. It took me a while in this field to acknowledge that there is a lacuna and that there is one element that is too often neglected in the immediate aftermath of a disaster uh, when the physical danger dominates, and that is the human soul. So the last years of our work at the Prepared Center for Emergency Response Research have been dedicated to teaching uh, the macho militaristic uh, profession of re search and rescue, uh, that the concepts of resilience, and, um, and to acknowledge that trauma is not always seen, definitely not in the immediate uh, aftermath of a disaster. And this is where I met Professor Golan Shaha with his idea of the Center for the Advancement of Research and Stress-Related Disorders with the beautiful acronym of CARES. And together we now lead the Prepared Care Center and I'm very thankful for this uh, opportunity and I'm looking forward to working together and promoting this uh, whole field together. One last thing, towards the memorial lecture by Professor Joyner later this morning, uh, disasters, which is the field I come from, by nature come unexpectedly, even when the writing is on the wall. Often questions we ask ourselves afterwards are how could we have known, what could we have done, and these questions are quite similar to the ones asked when people overcome life's strongest instinct of self-preservation. So it seems that everything comes together. And looking at this great hall of people this morning, and it's really a big hall to fill with so many people this morning, at such early time of this morning, uh, I'm optimistic. I'm sensing a spirit of uh, caring and compassion that is so important for this field. I'm wishing all of you a pleasing education and enjoyable day. Thank you.
as the president and the dean have noted, we are proud of our department. We do have some leading investigators in the department. In the department. One of these is our very own chair, Professor Gary Diamond, who's also a leading person within this field. He's the recipient of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention Award for contribution to uh, suicide research and is the arch, one of the arch developers of attachment-based family therapy. He's going to be uh, active in the symposium twice. He's going to address us now as chair, and then later he's going to serve as the discussant for Professor Joyner's keynote uh, speech. Thank you, Gary, for addressing us. I'm just hoping I get a hug and a kiss like Rivka did. Okay, when I come down, go on. Okay, so anyway, in the name of the psychology department, I want to tell you how excited we are, honored to be co-host of the symposium and to greet you all and thank you for coming. Uh, Sid Blatt, I look around the room and there's many senior psychologists here who have, were tremendously influenced by Sid Blatt, both by his theory, but also by their relationships with him. Um, in our department in particular, we have a number of faculty members, both former and present, and many students who were mentored by Sid Blatt. And I think the greatest testament to his influence on our department in particular is the fact that even non-psychoanalytic types like myself find themselves teaching the congruency hypothesis or using the ORI in their research. So this is a great day, a great opportunity. Thank you to Golan for organizing it, to the Blatt family for supporting it, for the university for supporting it. Have a good day. And now I, I will uh, address you on behalf of David Blatt, uh, Sid's son, uh, who couldn't uh, come here, couldn't come to Israel at this time of the year, even though he and his family come to Israel a lot and will probably address uh, the next symposium. Uh, I would imagine that the first thing that David Blatt would like to state is that he is not the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, so I will read David's words. He writes beautifully, uh, and you will have a chance to uh, see this, to, to learn this. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you to Ben-Gurion University of the Negev, President Carmi, Chairman Diamond, Dean Newman, Chairman Aronson, and uh, Professor Shahar for arranging and hosting the symposium in, order, in honor of my father, Sidney Blatt. And thank you to Professor Joyner for coming to give the Sidney J. Blatt Memorial Lecture. It is extraordinary and perfect that this symposium occur here at Ben Gurion University, even though we are 5,000 miles from New Haven where my father lived. Having lectured and taught Throughout the United States and Europe, my father's most cherished place was Israel. He had an enduring bond with the country and its people, traveling here 13 times, including as a lecturer or visiting professor at virtually every university in the country. Although my, dad identi my dad's identification with Israel stemmed from his Jewish identity, it was not Judaism as a religion that drew him to Israel. My father struggled with religion. He could never read Hebrew, and he did not know Jewish rituals all that well. Instead, he valued Judaism for the stories it taught about people and for the communities of relationships it gave rise to. To my dad, the success of the Jewish people in the state of Israel was the living embodiment of these stories and communities. Growing up, my father was a quaint essential outsider. As a child in grammar school, he was wrapped with a ruler by teacher for writing left-handed. As an adolescent, he was teased by other kids for, for being unathletic. He did not distinguish himself in high school, in part 
because he did not know he was dyslectic. And in college, he flunked chemistry because he did not know he was colorblind. Born in 1928, my dad was 20 years old when the state of Israel was declared. And its existence and success were a source of tremendous pride to him. That Jews could be so successful in a non-Jewish world, indeed, in a world that he had just seen annihilating Jews, was an enormous inspiration to him. My dad came, came to Israel for himself, beginning for, for himself beginning in the 1970s, when he first traveled here, and he began appreciating that it was a complicated society that faced many challenges. When he visited in 1973 and 1977, he made sure that we stayed on kibbutzim as they captured his imagination and reflected his own political leanings. As the composition that and governments of the country later changed, he maintained his intimate connection to Israel, coming here time and again to lecture and teach. He developed a deep affinity for Israeli academia, and in particular, psychologists. My father saw himself as an outsider in his own profession, and the prototypical aggressive Israeli driver, which my dad did not appreciate, was exactly what he was looking for in students and colleagues, aggressive, independent thinkers who question authority. Hum, hum. His innate connection with so many Israel psychologists, Israeli psychologists and psychotherapists was based not simply on the fact that they were Jewish, but on their core common commitment to think creatively and find better understandings of and treatment for the outsiders of society, people with mental disorders, interpretation, exegesis and hermeneutics were his basic methods, and I would like to add an amazing uh, ability to pen penetrate quantitative patterns, and David continues, with the rabbinic reading of biblical texts replaced by the psycho psychologist reading of people. His profession and religion were mutually reinforcing with Jerusalem grounding him as much as New Haven. Sigmund Freud once asked himself, since you have abandoned all these common character characteristics of your Jewish countrymen, what is there left to you that is Jewish? A very great deal and probably its very essence, Freud respond responded. Unlike Freud, my father did not have an ambivalent relationship with Judaism, but his answer to this question would have been remarkably similar, as being a Jew and a Zionist were the essence of my dad's identity. It is with a profound appreciation of how much holding this symposium here in Israel at Ben-Gurion University would mean to my father that I deeply thank you for holding it. Thank you. Thanks for uh, 